It's time to play Demos on Demand. Hosted by yours truly, Juanita Coley. Hey, 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 guys, and welcome to another episode of Demos on Demand, where we are answering your top 12 questions in 30 minutes or less. We are attempting to demo an enterprise product in 30 minutes or less. Oh, my God. I am your show host, Juanita Nicole, the Contact Center Whisperer, the CEO and founder of Solid Rock Consulting. And I'm super, super excited to have with us this week none other than Karen from Scenario. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to see this product. Oh, thank you, Anita. I'm so happy to be here and I'm very excited to introduce it to you. So before we hop into the show and I give you the rules, tell me your role over at Scenario. So I am one of the co-founders of this great product. So it is a, uh, an innovative SaaS application that provides workforce insights to capacity planning, financial analysis, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including training recruitment. And I'm more than thrilled to be here so I can show you how it works. Oh, we, this, this is a big problem that we're trying to solve in the industry all the time. So I'm super excited to dive into the product and you show me around uh, the, the platform. OK, all right. So before we hop in, OK, let me tell you the rules. OK, so 30 minutes will be on the clock. OK, I'm going to ask you interview questions. You're going to answer those questions as rapidly as possible and accurately as possible. OK, and then whatever time you have left on the clock, OK, that is the amount of time that you have left to demo this enterprise product. So it's a big task. OK, the time to sure. beat right now, OK, is two minutes and 28 seconds. I am super, super thrilled to see if you can get it done. What do you think, Karen? I am ready. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to go to this next scene. As soon as I go to the next scene, then the time will start. OK, Karen, are you ready? I am ready. All right. So first question that you have, first question is, what channels does Scenario support? Scenario supports all channels. It's for omni-channel contact centers. We support inbound calls, outbound calls, like front and back office, chat, in person. Our algorithms within the tool support both non-deferrable and deferrable cha uh, channels. So you can do whatever you want. Awesome. Okay, so next question. How do you keep in customers employees front and center? Proper planning is key. So the right number of people in the right place at the right time. So you need to make sure support staff are not overworked. So it really focuses on, you know, making sure the productivity levels, the occupancy levels are bang on. We don't want agent burnout. We want to make sure employees stay engaged and are happy and they don't leave and walk out the doors. So we want to minimize attrition. And from the end customer standpoint, we want to make sure, you know what, anytime a customer contacts you, whether it be through phone or live chat or email, you know, they get a response immediately. They're not waiting on hold. You get a response out to them and you're, you keep them cap happy and you retain them as customers. I love that. Keep customers front and center. What is your approach to product enhancements? Oh, voice of the market is key for us. So we base all our product enhancements on what clients and prospects want. So we go out in the market, we showcase, we do a dog and pony show of what we're planning, our design work, our prototype, and show them what we're thinking of, and they feed in to the tool. So basically the people that need to use the tool, tell us what they want, and we put that on our product roadmap for enhancement. So it's purely user driven. I absolutely love that. So you're only creating what customers are asking you to create. Exactly. Absolutely love it. Okay, 28 minutes in, three seconds on the clock. How do I save money with your product? So it's all about optimization, making sure you have a balanced approach. Like I said, the right number of people. And also we're focused on the right number of agents and support staff. So a lot of people don't really consider support staff. We really have to consider the right ratio of support staff to agents. So you save money by, you know, if you optimize, you don't overhire, so you don't lose money. If you underhire, you lose agents. You don't do that, so you can minimize your attrition rates. So that's what it really comes down to is the optimization. And the, 
and the time savings too. So our clients that use the tool, if they came from traditional spreadsheets, it saves them, they said, up to 75% of their time switching to using Scenario. Huge time savings as well. I love that. I love that. What makes your product truly unique, Karen? There's no true other product on the market like it. Like we've rolled together capacity planning, financial analysis, training and recruitment, all into one really intuitive product. And because, like I said, it's user driven and user based, we're really making sure the functionality is there that the user wants. I come from a UX CX background. We've built an entirely intuitive system, minimal to no training to onboard clients. And it really is a complement to all the workforce management platforms out there where we literally can tie in with integrations and make sure that any platform you're using, this is Workforce Insights, that's an add-on and a benefit to it. Oh, I love the tie-in to the workforce management platforms. Okay, uh, second to last question. What is Scenario's pricing model? So we are based on an annual subscription model. So our users, it, it doesn't matter how many agents you have because the mm. users are the capacity planners, the financial analysts, mm. HR, recruitment, those kind of things. So we have different features and functionality. It starts at about 5,000 a year for an annual subscription and it goes up from there. And we have different versions based on what you as a unique company need and want in terms of your feature set. This is very affordable. Last question, last question. What, um, um, is there a minimum user count? One, you need a minimum of one user and you can add multiple users. So whether you have people that work in different departments, we're all about collaborative capacity planning because there's multiple stakeholders involved and multiple people that can work on a capacity plan. So one version of the truth and you can get all the voices and collaboration in there so everyone can see what everyone else is working on. Oh, I love that one version of the truth. I love that. Okay, I've stopped the clock. Okay, it is 20. You have 25 minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock. Oh, you, you, you did that pretty fast. You did that pretty fast. So you have a lot of time left on the clock for the actual demo. Okay, are you excited to move into the demo? Uh, I'm super Very excited because I want to see this. I want to see this. Okay. All right, so when I move to the next scene, you will see 25 minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. What I want to see, Karen, okay, I want you to kind of show me the UI, show me how it looks, the wizard, everything like that. I want to see some things around reporting because I, I know people are going to be moving from their spreadsheets into scenario. Um, I want to see what if scenarios. This is going to be pretty big, right? I want, I want to be able to see that. And you mentioned the recruitment and the training um, piece of that planner. I want to see that. So show me around the tool. Show me your, your unique things. But those are some of the things I'm super excited to see. Okay. Definitely. All right. 25 minutes and 25 seconds. Okay, Karen. So there's 25 minutes and 25 seconds, a little bit under now on the clock. Okay. Go ahead and go into the demo. I'm excited to see this. Great. Happy to show it. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Scenario. So basically, once you log into this tool, so it's browser based, you log in and you have two options. You can either create a new plan or you can access any number of saved plans that you have. So here you'll see you can create a new plan on the left. You can pick any start date of the fiscal. It doesn't have to be the start of the month, any date within the year. You can choose between monthly plans, 12, 24 or 36 months or create a weekly plan from one to 52 weeks. You can also name your plan and then you off to the races and you can start through the wizard. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna lead you through a plan that's already been built. Just that's been the data entries there and that so we can walk through it so you can see how it works. So let's go immediately to a sample plan and you can see what the interface is like and how you would enter your data into the tool. So as you can see, we've built this as a really intuitive wizard. It's a step-by-step -step, and it literally leads you through the hand through creating a capacity plan to really make sure you capture multiple data points and all the really important data that's gonna really fine tune and optimize that plan as much as possible. So here on the first step, you can see that you're creating your cues or your skills. So you'll name each cue or skill, you'll pick a work type. And when I talked about this in the interview, you can see all the different work types you have listed. Mm. You can even list another work type as well. And for each work type, you define it either as non-deferrable or deferrable. So non-deferrable being like inbound calls, right? right? Live chats. Deferrable being like emails, things that can be answered in hours or days. Back office stuff, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So here you'll see an example that we've built five queues between calls, emails, live chat channel, and work items. So once you've built all your queues, you move on to the second step. And this is how easy it is. Again, step by step, we're leading users by the hand. So you can see down the left hand side, we have all those five queues listed. And for each of the steps, you'll see a similar interface just to make sure that users understand how they're filling in their data. So in terms of work volume, for each queue, you fill in your, your work volume. So remember, we're building a 12 month, a 12 month monthly plan. So for any queues that you've defined as non deferrable, we're asking you for service level, so percentage answered and threshold. So you can see the 80 20 uh, threshold here. Mm -hmm. And for any deferrable queue, so for this example, it's an email queue, we're asking for a productivity factor here. So 90% productivity factor. And if you have a chat queue, just so you can see the type of input that we're asking for, for a chat queue, we have a concurrency factor. So this is really important really to fine tune and optimize that plan as well. So you can see the difference in some of the data we're collecting throughout the queues. So let's go back to the inbound calls queue, because in addition to inputting your work volume on a month by month basis, you can also enter the work arrival pattern. So you can choose between 15, 30 and 60 minute intervals Nice. You set your operating hours every day of the week. And what's great is you can also add exceptions. So if you if you're like a seasonal business, right? And maybe there's a, like if you in the summer, you have different operating hours. You can add that all into the tool as well. So you can add any exception months. You create a table and then based on the interview you chose, all your work volumes can be inputted in terms of that 15 minute interval that we have here. OK. So let's move on to the next step, which is average handle time. And what's important to note is we've differentiated between average handle time of tenured agents versus new hire agents. So on this step, we want to know what your average handle time is for tenured agents. And again, on a queue by queue basis. And I'll just point out too that for all these steps, you can actually select a queue to copy data automatically across from just to save data entry time. And also important to note, too, that we can build integrations into workforce management platforms. So all this data can be pulled in in real time and exported as well. So this step, average processing time for tenured agents, average handle time, I should say. And then what's key is the next step. This is what makes this tool unique, too. We're asking for the new hire agent learning curve. So on a month by month basis, how proficient are those agents? So in this example, we're saying that in month one, 50 percent 50% proficient. So what this means is you need two new hires to equal the proficiency of a tenured agent, right? So this is all factored into how many agents you need as well. And then in this example, by the time they reach month 11, they're hundred percent efficient. So you can do this again, Q by Q basis. It really dives down into the yes, degree. I love this. I love this. I love this. Sorry, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, 20 call. minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. Okay. I'm super excited. I'm so dialed in. Go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no worries. So next step, shrinkage. And what we've done here is we've really spelled out the different shrinkage factors. So a lot of times, and again, we, we know there's no true industry standard and you can't just put a blanket, you know, 20, 25% statement in there. Yeah. What we're trying to do is getting people to think about your actual shrinkage factors. Mm -hmm. So things like schedule adherence, people don't really think about schedule adherence, you know, someone's 15 minutes late or whatever, but mm -hmm. it adds up and that is a significant shrinkage factor as well. So what we've tried to do here is spell out a lot of the common shrinkage factors, like short term leave, sickness, vacation, meetings, that kind of thing. And you can input the percentage again on a month by month basis. You can leave them zero if they don't apply to you. And then you can also add your own unique shrinkage factors as well. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. OK, so so here, for an example, you'll see over 36 percent shrinkage month by month. Right. Like the, like if you were just to blanket it, you'd probably think it's a bit less. But once mm. you really, truly think about each of the factors, you realize how high this can be. Right. And this forces people. I'm sorry. This forces people to think about it. Right. Like yeah. what are those different things, especially like a newbie that might be um, forecasting or kind of learning? Uh, anyway, go ahead. 19 no, minutes no, and five seconds on the clock. So, so true. So true. It's really important to think about. So next step, I'm sure everyone knows about attrition. <laughs> it's one thing we always try to tackle. So here we're on a month by month basis. And again, Q by Q basis, what's the percentage of attrition month over month as well? So you enter that in the next step, working days and scheduling. So 
If you had entered in step two, if you remember with work volume, with those intervals, it calculates if you had entered your operating hours, it calculates your working days every month for you. But if you have deferrable channels and you didn't really put a work volume, you know, every 15 minute interval, you can enter these by hand as well. So it can be manual input as well. We're asking for the paid hours a day for each agent. And also we've built in part-time agent hours. So the percentage of total hours for agents that work part-time, because this you might have part-time and not necessarily full-time agents. So percentage of part-time hours, the hours per day and the days per week is entered as well to fit into the calculation. So up until this point, you've completed all the man manual data entry that you need. So you could technically do a capacity plan at this point, but what we're doing now is gathering some data so we can do that financial analysis piece. So in this step, and this is where we talk about support staff, because again, a lot of times people miss capacity planning the support staff, which is very important, like I mentioned before. So in this step, you can enter all the support staff roles you have. So in this example, we have quality assurance, supervisors, trainers, WFM analysts. You can add as many as you want. You can add multiple roles. And for each role, you're trying to define the support staff ratio to agents. And you can do it by headcount or you can do it by full-time equivalent. So we've built in this handy dandy trainer and QA analyst ratio in here as well. So what this does is it really helps you determine what the proper ratio should be for trainers and for QA analysts. So the tool asks you to enter your training length in weeks, your class size and support staff shrinkage, because again, support staff, they have shrinkage yeah. factors as well. And it's going to calculate the proper ratio. And we do that for QA analysts as well. And you can do it by percentage of interactions or monitors per agent per month. So we ask you for a couple key data points and the tool will calculate what the proper ratio would be and it will input it into and plug it into the tool right here so you know what you're looking at. So in addition to that ratio, we're also asking you for salary. So for each of these roles an associated salary. So this is really gonna determine the financial analysis when you're running that at the end as well. So again, on a Q by Q basis, we also asking you for overtime costs Again, the agent salary in the table must be completed to, in order to do overtime costs. So it's part of the financial analysis. We're asking for the premium multiplier and the training length. And the training length is important because what we're providing in the report too that you'll see is the cost for hiring a head of attrition because this is no small cost usually. So if you want to make sure there's a bum in a seat before someone leaves, <laughs> what's mm -hmm. that going to cost you, right? To know someone's trained and ready to take over when an agent walks out the door. So very important uh, costing factor to understand. So we've done all those steps and now we're on the final step, which is really just a review. So you can go through all your cues, look at all your data that you've entered and you can edit it on the fly, wherever you want, you can save it again. You can just make sure everything you entered is correct. And once you're happy with everything you entered, then you click calculate. And the system in the background spins and makes a baseline calculation for you. Mm. So what you hear is a baseline scenario based on all the data that you've entered. So you'll see here for all your cues, like these, these ones were non-deferrable. You'll see average speed of answer, occupancy, server level, the service level forecast. And here for your deferrable, you'll see a productivity factor. And then as you scroll down, you'll see your production hours. So total production hours, agent requirements, again, on a Q by Q basis. And this is really important here. So when you look at your effective capacity rate, yes. so, and your learning curve cost, so you know how we entered your new higher learning curve? Yeah. This is really important. So based on the new higher learning curve, you actually are working at an effective capacity rate of 92% and you need another 216 agents mm. because of that new higher learning curve in order to meet your thresholds for service, right? This is so good, Karen. Okay, go you ahead. You know what? It's important numbers to know, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your support staff, how many support staff you need. And again, this is the line I talked about too, hiring ahead of attrition costs. So in this example we're using, $8 million. Like this is not insignificant that you have to be aware of. So in addition to the salaries, if you're hiring ahead of your attrition, you know, that's the cost, overtime cost, total budget. And again, some important KPIs at the bottom too for each work type. So for each call, for each chat, what the cost is, important KPIs. So we talked briefly about scenarios and the whole purpose of the reason it's called scenario is because you can build scenarios on the fly 
which is very exciting and is what our clients love to do. So once you have that baseline forecast and you've edited it and you've tweaked it and you're kind of happy with it, then you can start running scenario modeling against it to see what you might mm. want to do, see how your numbers change. Yeah. So you'll see, I just added a scenario. It literally copies the baseline over and yep. duplicates the information. And so once that's duplicated, then you can go in and edit that single scenario. So yes. it doesn't change the baseline, but you're just changing the scenario. So what I'll do just in this example, just to make it quick, we'll change for inbound. We're in the inbound calls here, and we had stated a service level of 8020. Let's change that to 8120. Okay, so just one minutes minute. left on the clock, Karen. Awesome. So we'll just change that one data point and you can change as many data points as you want. So it's, it's not limited, but let's just change that one to see what the difference is and we'll recalculate it. And what the tool will do is then it will compare that change against your original baseline to see what the difference is. So you mm -hmm. can see here, so we're looking at scenario one here, when we start to look down in your inbound calls here, you're looking at inbound calls because we changed that service level, right? From 20 to 120. Mm -hmm. You're now looking at occupancy that's gone up to 97% here. And if you scroll down to your agent requirements, you now need 20 less agents if you if because you change your threshold. So you, you need 20 less agents, 18 less effective agents, two less supervisors, and you can see the impact on your budget, right? Here, you've gone down about a million dollars. So you can compare these side by side along with the KPIs. So for every inbound call, it was $5.96. It's now $5.78 as well. So nothing is stopping you from continuing to add scenarios to this. So, you know, you can run this one, you know, we like to say that you can run like, you know, the worst case scenario, best case scenario in between, you know, you can compare all these together to see what works best for you and edit them. And then once you're happy with one, say you've built one or two scenarios and you're happy with one, you can then click switch and it switches it with your baseline. So that mm. new scenario becomes your baseline and then you can build even more scenarios on top of that as well. Really effective to see what changes. So we've been looking at just the table view, but we also offer uh, users a graphical view because a lot of times people like, you know, seeing fancy charts and <laughs> they like exporting things to reports and, you know, for anything that you want to deliver to say to your manager and that. So for this example, we're taking all that table data and we're building that data into charts so you can see it for total required agents, agents by work type, support staff, by role, the budget and the cost per work activity. So this is really, really valuable for people that just want quick snapshots to in certain reports or deliver to someone higher up that really responds better to visuals rather than table data. So we've been looking at an annual plan. So we built a, a, a 12 month plan, but we can now take that kind of bird's eye view we're looking at here and start drilling down into more detail. So this is very high level. So now we're looking at the monthly plan. So again, same, you know, same items on the left here, you're looking at all your cues, but now on a month to month level, what are the results? What is your service level? What are your production hours? How many staff do you need? And again, all your scenarios, you can see the baseline, you can see scenario one, you can see scenario two, and then your budget month to month, you can collapse, you can expand areas, you can really dive deep into the details. Nice. You can you can also go down to a daily plan. So this is valuable, especially when you've done that, you know, that work interval forecast, right? So you can see how much staff you need on a day by day, month by month basis. So here we're looking at Mondays in January and you can start scrolling through the days of the week to see, you know, at an interval level, what the results are. And you can kind of see a rolled up view at the bottom with a fully optimized and adjust it if you want to make adjustments. So what's great about this is let's say suddenly they told you that your workforce, you have 2%, you have to cut your workforce by 2%, right? Which would be horrible, but this does happen. So let's say our headcount change is going to be 2%. You want to see immediately what that impact is going to be yeah. on your plan, right? So we've said, okay, our headcount has changed by 2%. Look at the difference now. So in forecasted service level was 81, now it's 66.9. Your average speed of answer has doubled from 15 seconds to 31. So what this does is it really gives you ammunition to go back and say, well, that's great. You know, you did to say, you know, my workforce was cut, but this is gonna be the impact of making that cut, right? 
And if that cut happens, then you can go back and what I showed you with the scenarios based on that cut, you know, what can you do then if your head counts being cut or your budgets being cut, right? Your budget gets reduced. What this tool allows you to do is say, okay, my budget's being reduced. What can I do to maintain my service levels? Where else? Maybe I can, you know, decrease my training or increase my training, or maybe I can do something else, right? To really level it out so I can still meet my customer demand. So that's, that's the key value of this tool. It lets you play with the numbers mm -hmm. and very, very quickly see the results. So you can, you know, you know immediately what the impact is going to be either on your headcount and your staff or your budget and what you might need to do, right? So that being said, for each of these plans too, you can export it. So you can export it to a really nice Excel spreadsheet. If you want to play around with it in Excel, you can print it to a really pretty PDF file if you want to do that. And I wanted to jump you over to the training and recruitment planner because I know Juanita, you had asked about that as well. Yes. So yes. this makes us unique as uh, unique too, and a really value add for recruiters and, and trainers and people, you know, really trying to understand, you know, how many trainers you need, you know, what, what's the, what's the end result and how many people are going to be graduating? Does it fill all the empty seats that I have? So you'll see here that all your cues again are still listed on the left. And the tool asks you, asks you for some key data points. So here you can choose a scenario. So, you know, we've built a couple of, we have a baseline and two scenarios. You can choose whatever scenario you want. You input your training length, your forecasted graduation rate. So here we're saying 75%, what your class size is and how much recruiting lead time you have. So then the tool will tell you, okay, based on all those parameters, it tells you how many new hires you need every month, yeah. when you need to start recruiting, when the new class, the date the new class needs to start, and how many trainers you need on a month by month basis. And then you can do this queue by queue and then see a roll up. So in this case, for all queues, across all queues, I need, for example, in this month, 106 new people, and I'm going to need 11 trainers. Mm. So it really gives you that kind of bird's eye view, but also you can dive into the weeds and really determine on a very minute level, how many people you need to hire. So this is helpful when it comes to hiring a head of attrition, right? Absolutely. Yes. Right. So you make sure that, you know, like if you suddenly lose a lot of people, you have people ready to go fully trained, ready to meet the customer demand. So your customers don't suffer, which is the goal. You don't want your customers to suffer. <laughs> Six minutes left on the clock, Karen. Perfect. Well, I. I walked you through all the key main components. I just, uh, what I'll say too, just to kind of summarize what we have here is that one of the key benefits of this that we've been told is the, sim the simplicity. And a lot of times building a simple solution takes a lot of time, right? To make it simple can take time. And by making sure it's what the user wants and what people have told them us is valuable what we've done is we give people trials to this you know we're letting anyone trial this you want you want 30 days we're going to give it to you to play and see how it works and there's literally zero training you need it's a really really intuitive tool and hopefully you can see that in my little walkthrough here it's really simple to walk through understand what data we're asking for and how to interpret the results. It really helps you make informed decisions, right? You get told, you know, budget cuts, staff cuts, you know, you want to give your staff a raise, but you have no more budget. This tool will let you play with the numbers and figure out how to make that happen and then be able to put that into effect. And that collaboration aspect too. So when we onboard people like from a company or a team, right? You can see each other's plans. You know, you can have your own little area or you can see everyone's plans. So you can work on the same plans. You can send it to people to work on. People can contribute to them. It's a collaborative activity because there's multiple stakeholders involved in making sure those plans are accurate. I love it. I love it. So yeah, that's the, that's the kind of very high level kind of sense of the tool. I can talk a bit. I just wanted to mention too about what we're planning. So we are, we are in the throes of some major, major updates to the tool based on what people have told us. So based on people using this tool, what's going to be valuable for them. And there's three key, key areas, one being multi-skilling. We get asked a lot about multi-skilling and the desire to multi-skill. So we're building the tool, the ability to blend cues together to maximize productivity. And we're going to do it via either, you know, user can do it themselves or have an automated way for the tool to do that. 
and eventually have an AI recommendations engine. So you don't have to be the one making the decisions. The tool is going to tell you this is the best solution for you based on the data you inputted. This is what you should do. And this is how you should blend skills together. So we have that coming down the pipes in the horizon. The second thing we have is multi-geo, multi-geography. So we've been told to, you know, you have locations spread across the globe. You have different work volumes for locations in that, and you have to blend those locations sometimes too, based on language, based on skill. So we're building in a whole multi-geo aspect to this tool as well. And lastly, the, the last thing we've heard from a lot of prospects and clients is actuals. They want to see that you, they want to pull in the actuals and compare against their actuals and their data historically. How are they doing? How can they move forward? What they should put into the future. So we're building the ability to add in actuals as well in order to make this tool meet the needs of the people that are asking for these things. So again, these are things that people have told us directly that they would love to see included. And those are on our roadmap for next year to add in as well. I absolutely love it. This was fantabulous Karen I absolutely love it listen hang out with me in the green room I'm gonna wrap this show but it was so many things that you said that I absolutely loved I mean I was over here feverishly writing I love the chat concurrency of how you can um, configure the different types of uh, interactions or workloads I love the side by side guide the step by step guide because like you said it's very intuitive uh, oh, step yeah. one step two step two you're basically inputting the information I can see spreadsheets flying out of contact centers as we speak oh, <laughs> like, that to happen. this is yes. so cool this is so cool I also love the the step um, the side by side comparisons of the different scenarios I absolutely love that it's, it's so many different things I love but I'll hold you forever and we're at time all right so hang out with me in the green room I'm gonna wrap this show and I'll be right over with you thank you so Sounds much great. for being our guest thank you Anita was that not epic was that not epic okay all right listen if you want a full demo or a thorough demo make sure that you go to our page click full demo you'll be able to book a full demo however I was so many different things that you got to see in just that short period of time that I'm hoping was valuable to you if you have any questions make sure that you reach out until next time stay tuned for the next demos on demand See you guys soon. Bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure to tune in to the next episode right here on Demos on Demand.